Okay, welcome to the Tuesday, August 23rd meeting of uh, the Council Finance Investment and Parking Committee meeting. First on the agenda is the approval of the July 26, 2022 minutes. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve or are there any amendments that need to be made? I move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, so moved. All right, next on the agenda, we have Bill Davis, uh, first and second in line here. First on the list is Clean Water State Revolving Fund Loan, the Westside Treatment Plant Improvements. Bill, you're up. Okay, <clears throat> good evening, good afternoon, uh, Finance Committee. This is my first time presenting at the Finance Committee. So. Welcome. Thank you. It's a very intimidating, Bill, very intimidating. <laughs> so careful, <laughs> tough right. group, especially Jeff. So, uh, these first two items are they're really related to each other. They're both um, it's clean water state revolving fund application loan applications. They're both at the wastewater treatment plant related to wastewater. The first one is for uh, west side treatment plant upgrades. So we have a, a multitude of projects that upgrades that we have to do at our treatment plant. And rather than doing, you know, hiring consultants um, for each of the individual projects, we've aggregated them all together and want to do one project and we'll hire one consultant to do the work and we'll, we'll, we're going to be apply for a loan. It's right around $6 million, uh, $800,000 of that is for design and about 5.2 million is for construction. So design in 2024, uh, construction in 2025. So um, we will apply for the loan. Um, we have a deadline of October 12th to get the loan application in um, so that we can get the money to do these upgrades. So any questions about that? Or would you like to, would you like a list of the individual projects? Yeah, do you have any kind of infographic for us? I, I have, a, all I have is, a, um, like I have the CIP that lists all the different projects. Like a centrifuge replacement, centrate line, a new boiler, um, replacing Wemco pumps, building HVAC upgrades. So it's, it, it's, there are 11 different projects that are included within this one, within this one upgrade. These were all broken out in the CIP last year and uh, the wastewater plant folks were gonna try to accomplish these as single one-off projects. And every contract that we do is you know it takes effort to administer and manage and and we did this about 10 or 12 years ago where we bundled a bunch of projects together in one upgrades project so we could have one contractor and chase one contractor around the plant and coordinate with one contractor but when we did that it turned into like a six million dollar project so we want to go after a loan to pay for that basically so um, does that help thank you um council members do you have any questions any comments about this item yeah i think that was gonna be my question on how often this is done so it's not like this is a uh not every year thing but every five or ten years something like this is bundled okay and then so with the with the loans i was kind of curious should, should i ask early in the year so we get the we get the loan or whatever interest rate and it's just paid back out of the fund slowly or eventually we look for grant money to pay it or it's kind of it's it's a low interest loan it's usually like a half or one percent and it's paid out usually paid over 20 years okay it comes out of the fund yeah we don't we don't grant to pay back the the, the loan it's just paid out of it okay so then you just just like a house one, like a monthly yeah, payment. 1.66% is that what it is right now, Ned? It's so a 1.2% loan for Ooh. a 20 year. And I think it's a one yeah. point. Hang on, let me look again. Really uh, low rates. 1.6% for a 30 year loan and a 1.2% for a 20 year loan. It's a CW SRF, so it's from Ecology. Yep. So we programmed yeah. out the model jet for, for our rate setting. And it, it, it calculates the debt service over the time, the life of that loan. And it gets just built in our rate model. And it's an annual payment. We pay once a yeah. year for 20 years. Okay. Basically. So okay. it's basically already worked into the into the budget for public works that that I guess that money's what am I trying to say here? Sorry. 
is it basically committing future budgets to be sure to cover that loan amount or is it already basically budgeted it is built we assume it in the in the budget model the rate model if you were to say no on the loan we then back up the the project and then the funding source on it so but it would lock in that debt service requirement over the life of the, the 20 years so it does commit to that project okay so if we had if we took out a ton of loans all at once and a ton of projects and just went crazy then yeah we'd basically be locking up our lot of all our future funding for that department obviously not doing the case but okay all right i think i think i understand that better thanks eric i see you're off mute yeah this is nothing new city does this quite often public works capital loans or whatever you got to take advantage of one and one and a half percent interest and it's a it's a matching principle right it's a capital project and you pay for it over the, the life of the capital assets. So I think it's more than reasonable to pay for it. something that's supposed to last 30, 40, 50 years with a 20 year, 30 year loan. That's that's what you do in financing. You take advantage of really low interest rates. So uh, I think you'll see sometimes uh, when the state's not doing their, uh, passing their budget or whatever, some of the things that are held ransom is that uh, capital, uh, Public Works Capital Fund, right, Mike? They'll talk about right. that and that the local municipalities are waiting for that money to be released. So it's just a good practice to go ahead and lock it in. And it's paid by the rate payer. So if we take on too much, our rates will go sky high and uh, we'll find out about it. So you have to just kind of can't borrow for everything, but use it prudently as a, as a cash management tool to uh, leverage your current... Uh, your current receipts on utility bills to pay for capital projects. It's pretty that much. That's pretty simple. Thank you, Eric. Ned. I see you yeah. had your hand literally raised. I find it easier than trying to find the button. So, uh, <laughs> especially when everyone can see each other in a small group, right? When it's a big group, it's a little different. But um, this is the alternative to bonding. Also, like if we get this one one point two percent loan, it the alternative is to cancel the project maybe until we you know have reserve but really what would happen is we would do the project most likely and then have to you know get a bond for it at some point and those rates are what are those mike like three or four or five three, three and a half right now so three three was the last bond issue and and so yeah ned spot on this offsets the need to bond higher we still are our, our model still we still bond. You'll be seeing a bond series coming in probably the next year um, for the large, you know, large, large amount um, for capital projects that are anticipated to be bond funded. That's how our models build. It's heavy, heavy on debt. And just like Eric said, that way it, it spreads across the life of the assets and you're paying for those over time. So there'll still be bonding with this offset the need to bond, obviously this dollar amount for this project. We look for loans first, loans and grants first. So Right. So that's the oh, motor in tonight is we're yeah. trying to identify what loans and grants we can get up yeah. front and ahead of uh, needing to get a bond at like double the interest rate. That's really what we're trying to accomplish. Thank you. And y'all are just looking for a head nod from us tonight, right? Yeah, approve yes. to apply. Yep. Uh, approve to apply. Okay. And then we'll see this on the next study session. Um, no, you no. won't see it on, no. you won't see it on study session unless okay. um, awarded apply for the loan and it goes, and that process takes some time, right? Like it's not overnight or a week, it's can be months. Um, and then when we get on an award list and there's actually a loan to that we've been awarded, then council approves that, but that could be months and months out. Okay. So we're approving you. We're giving the head nod to apply. We're approving Just you the to application. Apply. All we're asking for is the approval for, there's like five items and all we're asking for on every one of them is the approval to apply for the grant or the loan. Gotcha. Uh, council members, do you approve? Okay. All right. Approval. All right. Uh, Bill, next up is clean water state revolving fund loan, the East side treatment plant UV replacement. Okay, so this is the second loan application that uh, we'll be doing that has to be submitted by October 12th under the same program. Our uh, UV plant was originally constructed over 20 years ago and is in need of upgrades, the, the ultraviolet system over there. So we are doing this is under what's called a um, ESCO project, Energy Services Company project. Um, the, it's a program under the Department of Enterprise Services through the state of Washington, where we work with um, that agency and a uh, energy 
energy company that's pre-qualified to do this work. Um, so we work with them as well as a consultant to help us design it. And we evaluate the facility for upgrades that are good, that will allow it to be more cost efficient or energy efficient. And then that turns into a project where we design it and then actually construct the upgrades. We used this program back in 2018 for upgrades at um, CE1 pump station. And we used it, I think about 10 to 12 years ago for some upgrades at our, at our treatment plant. So it's something we're familiar with. Um, you're gonna see in the next um, few weeks at council, not related to this loan, but something else related to this contract, um, uh, where we're gonna request authorization for um, having train the energy company start their investment grade audit. But we would like to have this paid under a loan. So it's a $4 million project we estimate construction in 2024. So we're gonna apply for money to fund this project. Council members, do you have any question for, for Bill on this issue? Okay. And is this another um, approved to apply? All of all five of our items are like we are asking for approval to move forward with an application. Yep. Council member, oh, uh, Jeff, do you yep. have any questions? Uh, yeah, and here to save time is all the all the rates similarly here one to two percent for all the loans. Okay. Uh, should should be should be what you now you want to take a look on the other funding. Yeah, yeah one's a chance is proposing a grant, so that's a really yeah. great. <laughs> chance uh, chance is the winner. His is free money. We love the grants. Yep. And I say free with a lot of administrative strings. Exactly. Yeah. Free. <laughs> Is money ever really free? Unless you find it on no. the street. Looking at the PWTF loans right now online to see if I can track down what the... Uh, did I have it in the email? Hang on a second. Yes. I think it's safe to say yes, they're under two. I'm not sure. Okay. Specific. All, yeah, one, I was surprised, surprised the one that 1. 1.2 was fantastic. They were one. I thought they were 1.6. Maybe the PWTF ones were 1.6. Cool. Yeah, either. I think you said the 30 year ones were 1.6. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. That's, that's the um, ecology loans, the public board loan. I'm looking, I'm trying to find the, let's see here. Funding maximum real capital government. Uh, it's not jumping out at me, but it's going to be in that range. It's going to be like a one to two percent loan, I think. Thank cool. you. Yeah, I forgot. It's check. not over two. It's not over two. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that. So. All right, council members. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Do we uh, approve to apply? Next on the list, uh, uh, Chance. Can you say your last name for me one more time? I, this is going to be a for everything. I hope not, but Barth it's easier. It's Berthium. 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 Much oh. easier if we get rid of the I and the A. It works. Berthium. I thought it was Berthia Yumi. Sure. I've been called worse. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, right. everybody. Uh, we, I want to, uh, we're get we're getting ready. We're just about finished with the design for the Kitsap Lake stormwater treatment project. We had an ecology grant to do the design. Uh, we have submitted the final 90% is what ecology requires uh, for their review. And we're expecting a letter of acceptance here any day. So the grant funding is available, uh, now we can apply for that and like bill it's due by october 12th the application is due so um what i want to do is i'm i'm requesting permission to apply for the grant uh, it's in our capital improvement plan for 2023 for 1.5 million dollars um the engineer's estimate for the construction is 1.7 and so there's some you know material increases that we have to take into account now the grant by itself would be 1.275 million with utility match of 425,000. And if we get the grant, the, the ecology does this for the loans as well. 
uh, in January of, of the following year after applications, they get a draft list, they publish it to for everything, for loans and grants and all of their financial projects. And then if we're on that list and we rank fairly high, it's a good probability that we actually get awarded in July. July 1st, all the funding is available and it takes anywhere from two months to six months to negotiate a contract. So we're planning on doing the final design for the project at the end of 2023 with construction in 24. It, you know, so we'll shift it around in the CIP as far as the schedule. Um, but really that's, that's how these grants or loans work. It's pretty straightforward. Once you get on that list, it's happy days. You could almost celebrate if you're in the top tier. Um, and we do pretty well. We're usually in the top you know, 20 or 30 projects out of hundreds. So, you know, that's always a good, it's good to see that. It means that we have good projects that Ecology really supports. Mm -hmm. And since they support the design, you know, they're, they're going to be looking forward to getting it constructed as well. So this will benefit the lake. Um, actually, it'd be a good, good thing for the lake. So the question of the day, <laughs> a do I have to apply. authorization to apply? Um, are the, what are the strings attached to, I apologize. Council members, do you have any other questions? And then I... Go for it. I, I was just gonna ask what the strings attached are. Uh, is there a match requirement? Is there, uh, you know, what is, what's expected of us? Mm -hmm. Well, the, yeah, we have to manage the project, of course. So there, but their, their state rules are not federal. So they're a little bit nicer to mm -hmm. us. We, you know, they're not as uh, onerous. The match itself is four hundred and twenty-five thousand okay. dollars. The grant is one point two seven five million. So that's kind of how it breaks down. Okay, so the utility match—that's what you were There's, talking about. The, the utility is, our, is the match. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, council members, you have questions? And that ma that matching fund is already in the budget. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, do we uh, give approval to apply for this grant? Okay, thank you, yeah. Chance, I appreciate you. All thank right, you very much. and I didn't read off the title of that, that was Stormwater Financial Assistance Grant, the Kitsap Lake Southwest um, Treatment Retrofit. Okay, next on the list is Public Works Trust Fund Loan, Anderson Creek Dam Removal. Ned, you're up for this one and the next one. Yeah, I'm pinch hitting for Gunner. Um, decided he wanted to paint his house this week so um, I'm covering for him on this one. So the Anderson Creek dams are the two original surface water supply dams and they're located over there on the south side of Sinclair Inlet by our Anderson Creek well field. They're up in the up in the basin there. Um, they haven't been used for uh, I don't know 100 years or something and uh, they're basically a fish barrier and the dam removal is what was negotiated with the tribe in order to allow us to repair the Schley Canyon culvert by uh, cure in place pipe method as opposed to putting in a six million dollar bridge. So we are committed to the project. Um, and we're just trying to, it's either uh, gonna come right out of the, the water fund, since those are water infrastructure uh, dams, or uh, we're gonna try to get a PWTF loan so that we can you know, fund it over time. So um, that's what the project is. Uh, I can show you, let me see, can I share my screen? I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Uh-oh. The host disabled. Oh, my. Can you tell me what a PWTF is? Public Works Trust Fund. The Public Works Thank you. administers the Public Works Trust Fund. Uh, that's the that's the same loan fund or loan program that we used for uh, the Pine Road Basin and the Kitsap Way culvert that just went in and the Price and Brentwood bridges that are going in right now. Those are all Public Works Trust Fund projects. And I don't know if you rem Thank remember, you. but on the um, for Brentwood, we were a little short, and we went back to the Public Works Board, and they approved us to you know increase our loan amount by half a million dollars uh, pretty quickly. So it's a it's a good group to work with. Um, anyway, it's the program. So you have something to show us, don't oh, you? Nope, I'm still disabled. Mike, did you enable me? Yeah. Okay, well I was just going to show you an exhibit where the dams were. So um let me go oh, one more time one more time i'm gonna try it again 
Okay. Third time's a charm. Hey, that worked, I think. Yes. I, I was going to say user error, but I clicked the wrong button. I don't know. Uh, my well, user error. My user error. Okay. So can you see my screen? Sure can. Okay. So this is where our well field, our, we have a pump station here. This is Anderson Hill Road. In Port Orchard. Like this is Highway 16 coming into Gorse right here. And these uh, these dams are located up Anderson Creek, quite a ways up the creek from our other infrastructure. Um, so it's going to be interesting just trying to get access in there to get to work on these. But we need to remove them. They're fish passage issues. And there are a lot of salmon that use this uh, creek basin. Um, I know there's a lot of chum, and I think there's some coho that do also. So anyway, that's, that's the project. Let me... Uh, let me look at, so um, Gunner sent me some talking points. Uh, the ask will be 1.6 million and it's in the CIP and it's funded by Water Capital. Uh, da, 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 I think that is the whole story for this dam removal. So. Council anyway. members, do you have any questions? Go ahead, Eric. Thank you. Uh-oh. You're on mute. I know, and I was just boasting or boasting, and I was pretty high tech. I got the hand up, and I was pointing. <laughs> One out of you're two. Pointing, you're pointing the wrong way. Oh well, I, not not the way I'm pointing. I'm pointing the right. It must be like yeah, a mirror it's then. Reverse. Is yeah. that the right way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You <laughs> still get credit. I'm giving you credit, man. Okay, half credit. Half credit. <laughs> so my question was, first of all, it's a done deal. We already made the agreement, but um, Ned. You had the city had dams there in the first place. Was it for what, what were the dams for? They were originally constructed by a private water company. Like the initial water service for the city was from a private water system. And they built those dams and they ex actually extended water main across the mudflat in Gorst into the city of Remerton. And when they did that, they used creosote lined uh, wood stave pipe. And so they immediately had a taste and odor problem with the yeah. water that came into town. So then they had to do some sort of odor control scrubbing. I don't know if they used chlorine or what they did, but that was the original surface water came from, that's dam one and two, uh, reservoir one and two. And reservoir three is up there by Pendergast Park, um, kind of south of Pendergast Park. It's a big stormwater qu quantity quality feature now. Um, but those were the original surface water supplies for Bremerton were those three impoundments. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, we went to Casaw Dam and we drilled wells and we had different, yeah. you know, sources of water and they just abandoned the use of those. And we built okay. transmission mains that had higher capacity. So it was just outdated. It, they, they didn't have a very, they, they didn't hold much water. They just kind of impounded it enough so you'd have a flow of water coming through, but it wasn't like, you know, Cassaw Dam and 1.4 billion gallons or whatever it is, right? It was just a, a very small impoundment to, you know, to have an intake there, basically. So if I want to go see one of these, uh, give me a rough idea. 50 feet wide, 10 feet tall. How big are these things? Something like that. Yeah, that's, I think you're in the ballpark there. I haven't seen them in years, quite honestly. And when you go look at them they're covered in trees and brush and yeah they're camouflaged now with all the, all the growth around them so obviously the city doesn't need them no no we don't need them we haven't much better functioning system kind of a nuisance actually they're kind of a safety problem so we tried to fence them at one time and i don't even know how that fencing is doing right we got the wells we got the wells up there instead so no mm -hmm. no need for the dams okay right thank you uh, Jeff, do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, do we give approval to apply? Okay. All right. Thank you, Ned. Next up is the Public Works Trust Fund uh, Oyster Bay OB1 outfall replacement. Yeah. So again, Gunnar gave me some. So this Oyster Bay outfall, we actually applied a year ago. It's a $1.8 million ask. The project is located in Oyster Bay, and it's basically um, an outfall from where our 
but kind of below our shop, you know, Oyster Bay that we just uh, did the force main work on over there at our public works complex. Um, hang on, I lost you guys. Why did I lose you? I'm right here. Um, so it's like a 30 or 36 inch outfall. It's concrete pipe. If you go down there to the pump station OB1 at low tide, you'll see like a manhole out in the bay and the lid is popped off of it and pipe sections have come off. And like there's joint separation in the old concrete pipe and it's kind of undersized. And, and the reason the lid uh, popped off, I think, is because the pipe is half full of mud. So the capacity is restricted. And when you have high flow, it's going to surcharge that structure and it just lifts this big concrete lid right off of the manhole. So we need to go replace the outfall. We need to um, reconstruct it so we don't collect sediment in it. Um, and uh, you know, increase its capacity again. So that's a project that's been on the books for a long time. And again, we went after a loan last year and didn't receive a loan. Mm. So it's not, it's not a guarantee that applying will get you to a loan, but we're hopeful and we're going to take another stab at it since it's coming up in the CIP. So. Council members, do you have any questions? Just curiosity, I'm guessing you get comments back on why they didn't approve the loan, kind of like most standard applications, or, or did they just say yes, no? I don't, you know, uh, so Gunner, he forgot that he had even applied last year when I brought this up to him, and then he went, wait a minute, I applied. So he emailed uh, Public Works Board, and he didn't get a response right away. So I asked him about it yesterday, and he reached out, and um, I don't know that he got a satisfying response. It just said it was pending in the system. But it was basically denied. So I don't, I think that's something that uh, he's going to have a couple of weeks to put this application together. So I think that's something he's going to scrub at when he can, can work on. I would assume he's going to ask the question of why we didn't get a loan and what we can, how we can improve it. So, okay, sounds good. Yeah. I've been there. Or normally my old feel is like you had to get a whole, whole flood of comments back about why your proposal sucked and. Um, why right. you weren't getting funding and they had to justify it. And then like, all right, I'll try again next year. And uh, all right, here's an extra sentence you wanted. So, cool. well, one other comment I would make is I think I said 1.8 for the, the 1.6 for the last loan. Honestly, our costs, you know, bids are coming in like 20 or 30% higher. So those numbers are based on estimates from like a year or two ago. So we might be going for a higher loan amount. A gunner needs to up, update his estimates. Um, it might be like a $2 million loan and a, you know, $2.4 million loan ask once we update our estimates. The bid climate is really volatile right now. It really is. So just to be clear. Hmm. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, it's in the CIP. You said, um, can you tell me when is uh, construction set to begin? Should we get this loan for funding? How long has this, how long has this project been pending for really? Uh, that I, I can't answer quickly how long it's been pending. I just went to my outlook to, cause I think it said what year it was and my outlook just like locked up on me. So hang on just a second. Uh, Give me just a second. I'm going to get back to it. Okay, here's the email. Let's see. So this is the Oyster Bay outfall. Um, it's $300,000 of design money and 2024 based on the current estimate and 1.5 million of construction money in 2025. But again, that's probably going to go up. Okay. What do you propose that? Okay. So when it goes up like that, are you going to come to ask for funding or is it a loan amount that you're going to be increasing? We're going to, well, I'm asking to apply. So whatever the costs are, what the costs are, right? Like, okay. We want to make sure we have a big enough loan. We don't want to come up so short. Which we seem to when do you when you apply for this loan, you don't already have an estimate in, or you already we, have an estimate. We there. will at the time, but Gunner, like I said, Gunner's out. So he hasn't updated his estimate before we go for the, we fill out the loan. So we're going to fill out this okay. loan application, you know, next two okay. weeks, we meet the deadline. And at that point, we're probably going to have an updated number that's higher than the number I just shared with you. But it's still, 
better to go for a loan than to wait and see if we have to bond for financing these. So whatever that number is, um, it's going to be like in the two to 2.4 range, maybe um, probably 20 or 30% higher. Okay. Um, so we'll ask for, but we're, we want to try to make sure we ask for enough because we seem to fail at that. And then, uh, you know, cause it's a long time. Like we're talking about construction in 25 and here it's 22 and we're trying to estimate construction dollars for 2025. Right. And see what other major event happens between now and then. Yeah. Like raise right. the cost of lumber and shipping. Yeah, um, yeah. not to mention all the other materials. Um, Council members, do you have any other questions for this project? Okay. Uh, do we approve to apply? Okay. Thank yes, you. There's approval. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to council discussion um, on the multifamily tax exemption. And I don't want to take up too much time because this is, um, we have a lot of folks here. And so I'd like to, I think we all have a good idea of uh, what this issue is. And honestly, um, I think the mayor thought it was a dead issue. And so I, there was just interest in discussing it. I think that some council members thought that it was gonna be brought up again. Um, and so I'm, I'm bringing it up here uh, so that we can have a discussion about this and make a recommendation from the finance committee as to whether or not to move forward, uh, approve yes or no, or pot potential modifications. On that note, it sounds like DCD is not um, amiable to a ton of changes on their uh, proposed policy. And so um, I'd like to, um, uh, Eric, I'm going to call you on the spot. Uh, if that's okay, I wanted to have just kind of like a, a review of your impressions and opinion about the proposed changes, the mayor's uh, proposal for the MFTE changes. Right, so we've been through this twice now and both times. Um, twice in the last, I don't know how many years, uh, proposals to change the MFTE program to just have it only available for uh, affordable housing and not have the eight-year program. And it has not passed the council. We've talked to developers and uh, the first time around, we actually had a study session and we brought developers in and they won't say showed us their books, but they gave us a model and showed, basically talked about how the cost of capital is, is primarily the same, whether you're in Seattle and Bremerton, you get much higher rents and return on investment in Seattle with the equivalent construction costs. It being about the same from Bremerton to Seattle with the only exception being the cost of land. Um, back then, it didn't make sense to the majority of the council, and I don't think we went to a vote for this time, but I think, if I recall correctly, but I think uh, this time, or when I was saying last year or so, it went before the council, and uh, it was pretty clear it wasn't going to gain any traction. I think the mayor pulled it, or the administration pulled it. Am I correct? I don't think we actually formally voted on that. It, no. Jeff, Jeff, when you're saying that they pulled it, my, I didn't see that it was pulled. Uh, can you explain why you're nodding? I, I, I just well, thought so it was tabled. It never came to a vote. Yeah, it never came to a vote. So okay. uh, we had the study session and the general taking public comment, but yeah, we never actually yeah. considered it for voting. So okay. that, 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 that basically summarizes the uh, past. And uh, I understand why the mayor may have done it. He had a new council and I give it a shot, but it didn't go anywhere. So if you're asking me to revisit it now, what has changed in the interim? Well, interest rates have gone up and the cost of construction along with inflation and everything else and wages and the just raw materials. We hear about it when we just talked about public works projects and the environment. There's just, if you didn't think it would pencil out before, it ain't gonna pen, excuse my English, it's not gonna pencil on now that the, the climate's even worse for developers. I, if you wanna kill the MFTE program, in my opinion, just go ahead and put the affordable housing requirement on there and get rid of the eight year program and you can kill MFTE in Bremerton. That's my opinion on that. And I, I think if anybody looked at it objectively, they'd come to the same conclusion. I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in, and getting rid of the program we have. In fact, I'd be dubious uh, to find out that we're getting any new 
projects. I don't know if uh, DCD has said, oh, we got new applicants coming since uh, recent, within the last four or five months rising in interest rates. I don't know of any. Mike, have you heard of any coming in? Not in the, not in the recent months, no. Yeah, this, this, this environment is extremely tough for developers. I mean, could you imagine mm -hmm. uh, during a low interest rate environment, it, you still needed the MFTE for this thing to pencil out. Now, during this current environment, this may be a moot point. We may not have any applicants, whether it's the 12 or the eight year program. So I, I think it's a dead issue as well. Okay, thank you. Jeff. Yeah, Joe, I think it's worth, because I know Eric, you weren't at the last meeting. I kind of pulled up the old slides and, and summarized a bit. Um, can I do that again real quick, Jennifer, just because there are a couple separate issues? Yes. Okay. So there were four, four things brought to us um, that were all lumped together. And so the, the first was the creation of a new 20-year uh, tax exemption. Um, and I'll sprinkle these in with my own personal comments as I go, too. But it was going to create this, a new... Uh, and I apologize for interrupting. Can we? Can you try to keep it to five minutes or less? So yes. by 4.57, be done. And then, uh, Mike, do you need? Uh, does he need to have uh, sharing capabilities? He's good. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Jeff. I apologize for that. Yeah, I, you want me to share, I can share the slides if that helps. Um, trigger it if it. Oh, uh, my computer is being a little dicey. Let me just. I don't want to kill Zoom here. So we have so the four the, things. Is the twenty-year MFTE? So, okay. Yeah. So the first one is creating a new twenty-year MFTE. Um, Personally, I have nothing against it. I think it'd be great to have on the books. I'm not sure anyone will use it if it pencils out, but I, I see no, I have no objection to putting it in there. Um, the second one was some administrative procedure amendments. Um, and this was basically compensation for low income displacement, first and last month's rent, moving expenses, um, helping people find uh, a different, um, find new housing. And then it also, uh, refreshing my memory here from last month. Uh, the 12-year MFTE extension, but, right? And the unit mix. The unit mix, that's right, yeah. So the unit mix was just how they make, they, how they, uh, make sure you have a mix of affordable units in a, in a complex. So that to me was also fine. I don't think I, we got the full financial ramifications of it, but um, I didn't have anything against that. So then the other two um, uh, was uh, modifying the 12 year and then the eight year modification. So uh, the 12 year modification, there was there was two modifications at once. And that was, uh, you had a kind of a low income and a moderate income requirement on the 12 year. And so it was pretty much completely getting rid of what if I remember the moderate and shifting the load down based on the county and, and then scaling to Bremerton's income range. And um, yeah, similar with Eric, we didn't really get any analysis. Um, where I last left it was, I did my own analysis and sent it out to council on the 606 apartments because that one we had all the public data on. Um, and for my math, the current 12 year penciled out for that project because they did use it. But if you did both of these changes at once, it would no longer pencil out and it wouldn't be used. Um, so that's the only data analysis I have is the one I did myself. So based on that, I would not I would not modify the 12 year in the way proposed. It's possible there's some middle ground where you modify it, but not to that extent. But um, I think whoever proposes that needs to do the analysis that it will still pencil out. And then the last one was the eight year. The proposal on the table was to completely get rid of the eight year. Um, similarly, I don't I don't like that. I think. It's being used for a mix of all housing. I know there's a, the public concern we've heard is that it's just going to luxury condos. Um, from the data I've seen, that does not appear to me to be the case. I was amenable to putting an income limit on the eight year and keeping it, keeping a market rate, basically put a, put a cap on it so that, yeah, sure enough, it's not going to luxury condos. Um, but talking to administration, it sounds like that would be too burdensome um, to put in and, and keep track of it for all the projects. So uh, the option on the table was to just to keep keep the eight year in or get rid of it. And if that's the case, I would I would keep it on the books. Similar reasons Eric said. So hopefully that 
is all clear. Thank you. Okay, so if we had to say yes or no on the entire policy, then the consent, I mean, it's not consensus necessarily, but the way that y'all are going is no. Um, I, I'm leery to try to bring up any recommendations to pick and choose pieces out of here. Um, I really do like the idea of adding um, some kind of um, safeguard for displaced uh, low-income tenants, um, any kind of, some kind of displacement um, uh, uh, the displacement, I'm sorry, I'm losing the words, the displacement uh, funding that's available uh, for, for those who are asked to move for some, you know, some reason or other, sometimes they're asked to move because there's uh, renovations or because the, after a certain period of time, they can turn it over and they can sell the property again. So uh, that part I liked, but I guess I'm just leery to pick and choose pieces. To present i think it's uh, I, go ahead i i believe if i remember right at the last meeting this came up uh andrea had said of these four let me know if there's any you would consider and that she was looking for us to come back and tell her you know oh yeah we'll take we'll do one and three but not two and four for example okay uh what are your feelings about um the displacement um it's not an insurance and i apologize i'm losing the words what would we call it displacement um uh the wording actually the wording on the slide is just displacement for low-income residents okay so that, and that's under number two administrative amendments so i'll, I'll just say bit, out loud yeah. i would absolutely if they came back to us with one and two the the 20 year addition and the and the administrative amendments i'd absolutely consider those two but three and four to me i would not so it doesn't feel like uh we would have um agreement on getting rid of eight year boom we're gonna move that aside uh 12 year mft extension eric where do you feel where do you fall on that particular item so right now the the 12 year as written is barely competitive so i wouldn't alter that program because i think you may kill the program so uh, honestly, it, that, that's what the data shows. That's what real world applications show. I'm, I'm okay with the administration talked about proposals one and two. I'm okay with going forward and discussing those. I won't say I'll vote for those because I need public input and all that stuff, but I'm okay with uh, the displacement of people that live where the project's being built. I, I'm okay with compensating them to find a new place as, as was described. I don't quite remember all the particulars on the 20 year program, but I don't believe they were in Jeff, they were in competition with the 12 or the eight as currently written. It's just another option. Hey, go ahead, throw another option out there. If you think it works, I, I, if I recall correctly, I, I had my doubts whether it was gonna work, but if you want, if the administration wants the 20, go ahead. So. And sorry, Jennifer, I just want to clarify it some. It's the 12 year modification. It was number three. Uh, the 12 year extension is part of the addition of the 20 year of number one. So you can extend it. People can apply to extend their 12 year to a 20 year. Right. So I just want to make sure that was. Yeah, so, so, I'm, um, so I'm okay with that, but I'm, I'm really not okay with changing the 12 and the eight year program. So okay. we're on the same page on that. Okay. And then um, displacement compensation, and that's specifically, uh, and so here's what happened my iPad is not with me. So I don't have the um, MFT code in front of me. Um, the proposed, I don't have, what I was looking at was the, um, uh, the, slideshow that that was from Garrett so the displacement compensation that's the word uh that would be for um that's the displacement of tenants that are in these units that already have the um that are receiving um this housing at a low income rate like the uh 12 year correct so my understanding is that that displacement was, for example, a developer has an existing apartment building, he or she intends to tear it down, and you have residents there being displaced, then you give them whatever compensation was the ordinance to help them find a new place where the developers build a new project. That's my okay. understanding of the program. 
Thank you. What are, uh, do we have a consensus that we like the displacement portion of this? So I myself am not super excited about it. I understand the intent and uh, I'd like to hear from the community, the developers. And I think obviously the uh, people that represent or have those interests in mind would be for it. I'm not against it at all. I'd just like to hear uh, pros and cons on both sides and then make my decision. But I'm more than willing to hear, hear the debate. Okay, so- Similar, similar here, yeah. I, I, I would consider an analysis of it. Okay, and what about the unit mix? That's lumped in with the administrative oh, the procedure amendments. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we're we're a no go for the for the eight twelve year modification, which includes the unit mix. We want to have an analysis, pros and cons, a public Good. hearing regarding displacement, and. Uh, we're okay on a 12 year extension to 20 request. I think I might've heard something combined in there. So the the displacement and the unit mix are both number two, which I, it sounds like we would all, you know, definitely consider with more information. Okay. And number, and number one was the state law update to put the 20 year exemption on the books, which also allows for anyone who wants to extend the 12 year to the 20. Perfect. Cool. So updating to the state law, that doesn't seem to be problematic at all, really. And then unit mix displacement, we'd like to have further analysis, pros and cons, public hearing, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. Um, it's 502. Um, is there any other is there any other discussion on the MFTE that um I'm just going with the consent? I'm just, you know. I'm pretty progressive. I, if I could have my way, there would be a lot of things that would be different. But really, I'm just going to go with um, uh, uh, with the temperature of the waters here. So um, I'm happy to push forward the these recommendations when I do my report. Um, and so I um, I don't have anything further to say about the MFTE issue. Council members, do you have anything further you'd like to add? Thanks for. Uh bringing it up so hopefully we can uh get the stuff that we think can pass council pass council okay yeah thank you okay uh last uh or next on the uh, agenda is the bmc 2.50.032 management and professional staff compensation actual salary rate mr riley that's all you. right easiest one for the night right here so this is the last item. Uh, we had a couple items talking with council president early in the year. He wanted us to kind of take a look at. One was the procurement level. The second one was uh, staff coming to council uh, in a management professional pay grade, not directors, below directors. Um, that had to go, every time a, a salary offer above step one has to come to council with this BMC. He had asked that we take a look at that um and uh, see what the appetite for council was to make a modification of that kind of mirror the rest of our bargaining units our team search contract or bpd contracts uh it's an administrative process um between step one all the way to the top step and i think actually in their their contract it's letters not numbers in the management professional grade it's one through eight so talking with council uh council uh, president good now a couple couple um discussion items kind of proposals one would be uh to mirror uh, administratively what we do with the rest of the staff with the teachers contract with the other contracts is it's an administrative decision uh, to bring them wherever their qualifications lie and we can place that person in that step based on qualifications that's currently what happens now anyway internally an applicant applies uh, they're vetted uh, they negotiate a salary offer uh, that goes to the finance director uh, to look at budget and it also goes to the human resources uh, manager to vet out their qualifications of how that's justifiable to pay above any given step uh, one through eight um that's one proposal the other proposal uh which council member good now liked was up through step six uh would be an administrative uh, uh option and then the top two steps would be left that would need uh, council approval for step seven or step eight to pay it somebody at top step would require council approval so those are, those are really the two scenarios um we're presenting tonight see which one council uh, the committee would uh support if any um before we took it to um study session to do a code change um, Ned's here to talk, the administration's here kind of to speak, uh, 
some of the nuances and the oddities um, going to council, uh, you know, how awkward that is a little bit for the candidate to come in front of a, a council, not knowing if they can really accept, uh, they're going to accept an offer, uh, giving notice to their current employer, uh, kind of puts their current employer on notice uh, that they've applied for a job and trying to negotiate in a public forum. Um, so uh, Ned, Ned, I asked Ned to kind of stay on. He's been through some of those recent discussions uh, and they kind of talk at like, kind of our hiring process of what we do internally, but I definitely want to hear from council. We see it kind of somewhat of a, like I said, kind of a, a clerical item that we want to address um, and see see what the appetite from uh, the committee was. So, Eric. Yeah, so before we get into this long-term, this long discussion of why we need to do this, I'll tell you it makes sense that we do this. However, I need to give you a little history lesson of why this is on the books. All right. Ned, you may have been there, but you were young and way back then in 2002, 2003. And uh, Mike, you weren't anywhere to be seen here, buddy. I wasn't born. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so, um, okay. And I got to be careful. I got to tiptoe and not say names. Uh, if you're a historian, you can fill in the blanks. The reason why this ordinance was passed is we had a mayor a long, long time ago when I was on council that hired somebody for a position, put this person in that position and gave her a raise from step one to all the way up to the charts. And then the council found out and <clears throat> got a little mad about it. And it was effectively taking a position and creating a deputy mayor, which was against the rules because we don't have a deputy mayor in the city of Bremerton. So, it was politics. We understand how that can happen. And it's an antiquated thing. I've seen it throughout the years. Like, why are we doing this? Kylie brought it up uh, uh, on a couple of occasions when we were discussing her and why are we bringing up her salary? And, you know, we could do it in an executive session, which we did recently. But I prefer to have the administration look at the marketplace and make that determination. So I don't like either one of the two proposals that were mentioned, Mike. So I'm going to mention a third proposal. Third proposal is you do it just like you do it with your Teamsters or whatever when you bring someone aboard. And, and basically you, uh, the, you, the directors can use their discretion after talking with finance and after talking with the mayor, determine what an appropriate offer is. But the safeguard should still be in place. So that safeguard would be whoever the mayor is, and this isn't directed at the current mayor, so when it gets back to him, I'm not accusing him at all, but the mayor's office cannot do this for someone that reports to the mayor. That's how you solve this. So we don't just say, oh, that council back in 2000, whenever it was, 2002, 2003, didn't know what they were doing. No, they knew what they were doing. They addressed a situation at the time that, in my opinion, was abusing the system. I voted for it. But let's fix it the right way, which is don't allow the mayor to have a conflict of interest by hiring somebody and putting them up at the top level without input from council. The mayor still could do it. So you, you keep that part of the ordinance for the mayor's hires within his or her department, but then for the rest, you follow them under the, the fold of everyone else. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm following, which I think makes sense it, at the director level. Anyway, you're getting the mayor mayor to approve at our level. And then for his level, it's the council would approve at his level. Somebody has. Yeah. An, anybody that yeah. reports to the mayor, then they, you yeah. have to have they have to have council approval. So we're maintaining the checks and balances. Okay. Anyone that reports to the department heads, they have to have the mayor approve it. And I think that would solve it all. So. Yes, Ned. There are a couple of like admin staff that report to the mayor that I, it seems like the director level makes sense, but if it's a staff member, um, and I think their management like is the mayor's secretary, and I, I'm thinking of um, like our uh, web designer person, like that might that tier might not make sense is all I'm thinking. Well, but but see that's Ned. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So this was called. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into it, but yeah, that's I'm, I'm what aware, it was. Yeah, I'm and aware, it got I'm elevated. 
it, it got elevated. I don't want to get yeah. into that, but so it's getting a staff position that got elevated to a kind of quasi deputy mayor um, because it was a staff person, person, not a director. So our proposal directors are still, we're, and we're not changing, don't want to change the, the director delegation. I think it needs to go to council, it needs to be confirmed. So the only change there would be um, staff positions under the mayor's office would still need to come for com confirmation uh, from, from council if above step one. So, okay. Okay. I think that, yeah, I think that cleans up a lot of things. I think, I, you know, I'll make that proposal, um, talk to the mayor about it, but uh, I think that that helps clean up a lot of, a lot of the, the work along the way. Cause you know, I'm thinking like looking at Ned and his staff and where we're not looking usually to bring somebody fresh off out of, out of, out of school for a lot of these positions. A lot of them are gonna get twos, threes, fours and fives uh, where they're gonna land based on qualms and that cleans up the process, expedites the, the hiring process. We still have oversight and due diligence that happens internally. So. I'm, I think that's a, a fair a fair offer. So I'm confident you guys want to abuse the system because then you're going to hear rumblings from your existing employees. So I, I'm confident in that. It's just that that situation that I just had described, I would still like to avoid that in the future. Yep. Oh, that makes sense. I think this will help tremendously trying to uh, negotiate with potential hires, right? Like this... This issue of oh I yeah you know we all agree with that pay band but now it's got to go to council to executive session so, and I'm like two or three weeks out before I can give you an answer if it's really approved that means they don't really have confidence to give notice that means we're waiting those three weeks for them to give notice te technically although this guy did you know Nick Katai did um, which surprised me I don't think I would have I wouldn't have given notice until council had approved my pay band right so I, I think it makes um, it makes us more marketable and, and more attractive to applicants by, you know, managing it this way. Jeff, do you have any questions or concerns about this issue? No, that seems reasonable. I, too, you know, don't like the micromanaging and the fact you have to wait around so long. Um, and as long as it's already the positions budgeted and you're not coming back to council to budget, then, you know, yeah, let, let directors manage their budget and their department. Um, so yeah, just thinking about the only, so if a director wanted to mirror what sounds like was the other situation and then barely promote somebody outside their, uh, job description, you're looking at having the existing mayor, the, whoever the mayor's at the time on board with that, um, which could happen. Uh, but as you said, it, it, would, it would take a lot of collusion. I'll tell you. So right now all positions have to come through me. Uh, to, to vet out the, the finances of it. All positions have to go to the HR manager to vet out the credentials. And then it has to be signed off currently by the mayor. So okay. it's gotta go through multiple. So there's gonna be a lot of questions. I see somebody that has okay. no skill set and they're being at a top step. We're gonna question out of finance. They can go to HR, they're gonna question it. So they're gonna have two things behind the mayor before he, author he or she authorizes that. So the internal okay. steps are there. So. Perfect. All right, no, I like Eric's proposal. That, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, and including staff and directors in there. And so just, and I'm sure I know the answer to this, but if it's a, I mean, it was, it would never be like a changing the band if there wasn't the budget for it. No. Correct. Any budget amendments got to go to council. That's in, that's in our code. So okay. outside budget authority, they'd have to go ask. And I think, all, yeah. Also okay. with promotions. So promotion, promotional, but we're not, we're not right now, uh, discussing that, uh, how we promote and how we move folks up. That's still static. I think it's, it's up to the next pay band one over. We're not promoted, pre presenting to change that right now. It could be something down the road, but not right now. So great. This is new hires. Okay, I support this as well. I like that idea, Eric, thank you. Okay, we will draft, uh, draft a code revision over with Kylie and see how we incorporate the language and make it sound clear and make it fit. So That'd be great. And we'll present to study session, bring it to a study session. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any other uh, business that we need to discuss today? We are right at 515. So let's just say no and leave so we can have exactly one hour meeting for the first time in a long time. No? Okay. Bye. bye. You guys did great. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks all. <laughs> Go get that money, y'all.